Greetings Acolytes and welcome back to the channel. We're here with another longer form discussion video. I'm again joined with the Archivist today. Hey, what's going on guys? Glad to be back. So the topic today is one of the most heavily debated ones in all of Star Wars. Oh, and yeah. I feel like I say that a lot, but with this it is very true. And that is the duel between Palpatine and Mace Windu. And first off, we want to thank the, everyone that suggested that as a discussion topic in the comments. And we'll definitely do our best to continue with this format and take a more free-flowing, in-depth look in, into the lore. But we appreciate you guys watching the lightsaber form video. But essentially, the topic is, did Mace Windu defeat Palpatine legitimately? Or was Palpatine throwing the fight in an attempt to vilify Mace Windu, if you will, to vilify the Jedi from the perspective of Anakin and to usher in the coming of Darth Vader in the full turn by making the Jedi out to be the legitimate, you know, antagonists in the war and the individuals responsible for the corruption of the galaxy. Mace Windu at this point to Anakin represents everything wrong with the Jedi Order, which plays out perfectly for Palpatine, and he is able to put Mace Windu on a hypothetical trial in Anakin's eyes by throwing this fight and by showing Anakin that not only are the Jedi going to take over, but the Jedi, Mace Windu, who sits upon the <coughs> council, is going to strike down Anak or strike down Palpatine out of line with the Jedi code, if you will. So, you have one side of the people that say this is perfect for Palpatine's plan and this is all orchestrated beforehand. Palpatine throws that fight to get himself in the perfect positioning. And then you have the other group of people who say that Mace Windu's Vapad, or Vapad, however you want to pronounce it, has grown so powerful and so perfected that he is able to pull from Palpatine's own darkness an endless well seemingly of darkness and he uses that in conjunction with some other you know feats that we'll discuss a little bit later in today's discussion but that the duel itself is a legitimate victory for Windu and likely would have just resulted in his victory alone very heavy-handedly it is not a greater manipulation by Palpatine it is legitimate so I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to the archivist and first I find it fitting that we discuss the background and the philosophy behind the original filmmakers intention the original filmmakers being mm -hmm. the individuals that choreographed the duel and of course george lucas so this isn't the in lore explanation if you want to term it that way but this was the original right. intention of the filmmakers and the genesis of who won the duel so my friend uh what did you discover so whenever I was looking in the behind the scenes of the making of this scene, right, um, I noticed something that's actually pretty interesting and that it, uh, I'll just kind of put it as a thesis here, it was the original filmmaker's intention that Mace Windu won this duel. And it's interesting to me that they decided to do this because Palpatine in lore today has become so much stronger than... Um, than what he used to be. And what I mean is that with all the new content that's come out since the release of Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine's character and his power level has evolved far beyond what the original filmmaker's uh, vision for him was. It was said by the producer, I don't know his name, um, George Lucas and Nick Gillard, who is the stunt coordinator and of the, all the lightsaber duels, that Palpatine can be matched and defeated only by Yoda, Mace Windu, and Anakin Skywalker before he got into the Darth Vader suit. Um, so, you know, following that logic, it seems that Mace was able to match Palpatine in his office, and it was not an easy victory by any means. Uh, the disarm that he got was high difficulty and completely... Uh, circumstantial and I know we're probably going to be mentioning this and going way more into depth in a moment but one of the biggest arguments that Palpatine threw the fight is that he only loses the moment Anakin enters the Senate chambers so clearly the argument is that he sensed Anakin coming in let himself be disarmed so the moment that Anakin entered the office he sees Mace leveling his lightsaber at Palpatine's throat um, 
Interestingly, in almost all of the original versions of the scene, Anakin was actually present for most of, if not all of the duel between Mace and Sidious. Um, and there was even a cut of the movie where Anakin threw Palpatine his lightsaber. And you can see in the movie, there's actually a blooper where sometimes you can see um, Ian McDermott wielding Anakin's hilt um, because from the original cut, that the original version of that scene. So that kind of... I did not know that. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of, you know, I don't want to say it completely throws out the window, the uh, theory that Palpatine threw the fight because he sends Anakin coming in. But, I mean, that is definitely a good argument against it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we have to make a decision as fans, right? Do we pick the original intention of the scene by George Lucas and the producers and the choreographer, or do we pick what the lore has given us today? And I don't mm. think that it's really irrefutable to say that Palpatine and the lore eclipses Mace Windu's power. Yeah, I think no. that that's something that we can all agree on. Um, but mm -hmm. again, in terms of the filmmakers, although Palpatine is this ultimate Sith, he is not the ultimate power that you know we sort of perceive him as now. Mm -hmm. George Lucas, George Lucas, you know, quite famously did not like the Emperor's return originally uh, in Legends continuity. He doesn't even like the character of Mara Jade at all. George <laughs> Lucas famously wanted Luke to remain unmarried. So as in terms of that and sort of giving that perspective, there are things in the lore that contradicts what George Lucas desired and intended. That is just right. fact. Um, and that's something that we have to accept because at this point, there are so many individuals who have worked on Star Wars mm -hmm. and who have contributed to it. George Lucas is the biggest contributor, obviously. He's the man that came up with all of these characters. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are parts of the Lord that disagree with what Lucas said. Is it yep. an outright wrong explanation to say, Mace Windu won this battle completely legitimately, or is it wrong to say Palpatine threw the fight in an attempt to, you know, reach out to Anakin? Neither of those is inherently wrong, which is what makes this argument so compelling, but we <laughs> as fans have to make a decision of what do we prefer. I prefer in the lore, and my headcanon is that Palpatine intentionally threw the duel to appeal to Anakin. That is my own headcanon because of all of the lore that I have, you know, delved into with Palpatine, his immense power, and studying Mace Windu and his immense power. There is no part of me that feels as if Windu to Palpatine in the lore is a legitimate win. And the only individual at that time that can beat Palpatine in a blade-to-blade -blade duel as a Jedi is Yoda. It is not Windu. Um, and again, we've covered extensively Yoda is superior with the blade to Palpatine, but Palpatine is superior in the force. And, you know, maybe Palpatine has learned his lesson about Windu getting a little bit too powerful and letting the fight go on a little bit too long to the point where he's able to perfect the pad. Um, but he's not going to make that mistake again. But it is my headcanon, Mace Windu, incredibly powerful maybe the second, third most powerful Jedi at this point in time, the only rival being Anakin Skywalker, and of course, his better in Yoda. But my headcanon is that he threw the duel. I mean, what what do you think? What is your overarching headcanon and opinion? For the longest time, I believe that Mace Windu had truly won that fight, and that was a stance I held for most of my teenage years. Once I understood exactly how Vopad worked, and I started getting more into the actual lore of lightsaber combat. I was like, oh yeah, no, totally Mace Windu got that fight. Um, but it was when I started realizing just how powerful Palpatine really is that I started realizing, no, I'm pretty sure Palpatine threw that fight. Even if it's not Lucas canon, like we've said before, um, we can't underestimate Palpatine's knowledge of the Force and how just strikingly brilliant he was as a tactician. I mean, the most compelling argument for this case is that he is a master manipulator. I mean, 
George Lucas compares him to the devil himself, and he knows how to manipulate all situations to his favor. Um, even the novelization did this clever thing where he hit a recording device and pretended to be helpless and frightened as the Jedi, uh, quote unquote, unfairly arrest him. And then, you know, the, he just knows how to turn all situations to his favor. So even if not on a basis of force powers, even if Windu could best him in lightsaber combat, he was definitely directing that situation, in my opinion, in order to draw out Anakin's dark feelings. Because Anakin was balancing right on the knife's edge, right? He was almost there, but still heavily conflicted. All he needed was just a little push. And that push comes in the form of revealing, or, you know, quote-unquote revealing, the Jedi Order's hypocrisy, which Mace Windu, being a ideological counterpart to Anakin his whole life, it was honestly just the perfect scenario. Yeah, I mean, I like the way you put it, that no one in that room is not there without Palpatine's consent, which is, <laughs> you know... Yeah. Which is a horrific thought. I guess my only counter to that, playing devil's advocate, would mm -hmm. be, does Palpatine underestimate Mace Windu, and does that fight escalate to a point where it is beyond his control based on his own hubris? Which I would say is extremely possible. It is possible, and we can actually look to the Revenge of the Sith novelization to kind of learn what might have been happening in that room at the time. Um, this was another thing I decided to look towards after I stopped looking behind the scenes and decided to look for a definitive answer in lore. And the best place to do that was right in the novel. And the novel is not from Palpatine's perspective. It never switches to what he's thinking. Um, the novel treats him more like a force of nature and everyone reacting to him. And so we know from Windu's perspective that when he sinks deeply into Vapad and he just kind of gives himself into it, he is able to, you know, like we've talked about earlier, realize Vapad's full potential against the pure darkness that is Palpatine. But from Windu's perspective, he says that even by giving his all into Vapad, it was only enough to match Palpatine's power not overcome him. For the majority of that fight, they were stalemated. Because Palpatine is essentially fighting against his own power. Um, yeah, they had, that's it how said, it works. Yeah, it, it, the novel put it like they created a loop between each other. Like, yep. uh, they, they, they completed like a circuit. Yeah. A super conductive loop as, uh, you know, we've dis described in countless videos. That's so mm -hmm. fascinating. Um, one thing that I think people get wrong or rather misinterpret about Vapad is that this is really the only time where the lightsaber form is perfected. This is the only time where it is taken to a degree where Vapad has reached its limit. And the only reason that's possible is because Palpatine is the epitome and embodiment of the dark side. Now, when Vapad, you know, encounters that charge, as the novel puts it, that's when the circle can be complete. Which mm. is just wonderfully written, you know. The Revenge of the Sith novelization is an incredible, you know, piece of literature. I love it so much. I mean, um, even George Lucas, his opinion on the novel was he really liked it because the novelization actually included a lot of moments that were cut from the original screenplay. Um, so he always, he actually appreciated the novel because of that. And he considered it to be, uh, pretty faithful to canon lore. That's, that's incredible. The thing that I also want to touch back on that I found really interesting is what you said earlier mm -hmm. about previous cuts depicting Anakin giving Palpatine his lightsaber. And a lot <laughs> of fans have criticized before that scene because they use that as an example of it not being very well thought out. I, I don't know if you've seen that argument before, but mm -mm, like, not. why is why is Palpatine holding Anakin's lightsaber hilt? That doesn't make sense. But now, oh. 
it, this makes perfect sense. The the fact that Anakin would make the decision to save Palpatine's life, likely in a moment where he wasn't in his utmost peril that would follow. Uh, and I just think that's so interesting that Anakin's turn was so much more proactive in different versions of Revenge of the Sith. That's that's really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, um, there were very several different cuts of that fight scene. Um, there was like a version where Mace Windu had his arm cut off but was still defending himself with one arm. Um, there was a version where he collapsed down on the floor instead of flying out the window. Window. There was a version where he even like dueled with Anakin shortly before Palpatine like took over and you know force lightning him. I mean, there was a lot of different ideas that were circulating for that before they landed with the final product. That's incredible. So talking back about the novelization, mm -hmm. you briefly refreshed it. And the novel gives us a firm answer as to exactly how Mace Windu is able to disarm Palpatine. Now, as you pointed out, and how I want to reiterate, it doesn't say Palpatine didn't throw the duel because we're not in his head ever. Correct. But it does offer us an explanation as to exactly what Mace Windu is able to use to his advantage to tip the scales, to break the loop, and to get him the victory. Do you want to sort of fill them in and what that factor is that allows Windu to win? Or, yeah, absolutely. you know, break the duel? So basically the way the fight is going is Mace Windu is falling deeply into Vopad, doing everything he can to meet Palpatine's blows. And at this point in the novel, Palpatine is literally just described as a black storm wielding a meter of fire. That's the only way Anakin is even able to see him. He, he can't see Palpatine because he's moving so fast. And he's just a torrent of dark side energy. And Anakin senses Mace Windu in this moment actually let go of all of his Jedi restraint in order to actually keep up with him. Uh, I want to be very clear. He didn't say that Mace Windu was using the dark side, but he was just letting go of the compassion and restraint needed to keep Vopad in the Jedi way. And he was going full in with his passion and his desire for victory. So they're in this storm of fighting and from Windu's perspective, he's trying to search for the shatter point, the weakness in Palpatine's um, style, because he's looking for any way to tip the scales. And he finds this point, this focal point of fear, and he believes that it's Palpatine's fear. So he draws upon that fear and was able to just put that, like tip his power right over the edge in order to disarm Palpatine. But when he has Palpatine on the floor, it's later revealed that it was not Palpatine's fear that he sensed, but Anakin's. That's, yeah, wow. So Windu is able to draw upon the energy and the darkness, you know, fear leading to the dark side from Anakin. Mm -hmm. And he uses that to just tip the scales ever so slightly and break off the duel. So if Correct. Anakin is not there, theoretically, with no interference, the duel could go on essentially eternally, which is That's something exact that I find very interesting. That is exactly what the novelization says. After it says that they uh, reached a stalemate, um, it, the novel then goes on to say that neither one of them had sustained any wounds and that the fight could have gone on indefinitely from that point. Something that I would like to point out, something that's interesting... We know that Palpatine is a character that is not necessarily fearless. We know that he Correct. holds legitimate fear for people, for situations. We know that he held intense fear of Luke Skywalker, for example. And we can see in the film, Revenge of the Sith, that he holds a legitimate amount of fear in moments of the duel with Yoda. Right, um, yeah. So he is capable of feeling that so mm -hmm. the fact that um the fact that essentially he had no fear when dueling mace windu is a little bit more of a credit to the fact that palpatine did actually throw that fight because of course he could sense fear 
but at no point in the duel could Mace Windu sense that he had any fear for him directly through Palpatine, which again, I think adds a little bit more precedence to the fact that Palpatine may have thrown that fight. Do you have any thoughts on that? You know, it's kind of interesting that there were several Jedi that Palpatine really wanted to shove it to. And I know that Mace Windu was specifically someone that he desperately wanted to present his power. Because so many times in the uh, Book of the Sith, he responds to a lot of Mace Windu's comments. And Mace Windu's like discrediting the Sith and talking about how their ways are uh, useless and all this other stuff. And Palpatine is continuously like just insulting him for that. And you know, we've talked about this before, how Mace Windu unintentionally represents the dogma of the Jedi at that time. And even though Yoda was Palpatine's rival and the person he considered to be his light side counterpart, I think that Palpatine just hated Mace Windu, man. He just wanted nothing more than to just shove it down his throat how powerful the dark side was. And I really think that his hatred would have overridden any fear or even worry that he would have had um, when fighting Mace Windu. I, I don't think that there was a single doubt in Palpatine's mind that if he wanted to, he could absolutely destroy Mace Windu. Until he gets gets to that moment, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's fast. It's fascinating that Windu represents the giant hubris of the Jedi, because he's so much more arrogant than any other Jedi character besides Anakin that we know. Uh, Yoda is not an arrogant individual. He's just not. He's arrogant in in terms of like what he represents, but personality wise. Palpatine and Yoda don't necessarily clash. In fact, they find themselves able to like have conversations that are, you know, a little bit less jabby than him and Mace Windu, Palpatine and Mace Windu. But I get that interpretation as well that like Palpatine hates this man and Anakin hates this man. And they bond over him being the representation of everything that's wrong with the Jedi. And that's not to add precedence to the fact that the Sith aren't, you know, they're definitely wrong. They're definitely the villains, but right. the Jedi are arrogant and it's almost frustrating to them how powerful Windu, Windu is with all of his arrogance and the arrogance of the Jedi. He is the epitome of the man that they want to utterly destroy. And that hatred I can definitely see blinding Palpatine to fear. And another thing we should point out is Palpatine has always respected Yoda. We've said before, mm -hmm. he acknowledges power wherever he can find it. He can yeah, disagree I with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he disagrees with it philosophically, but he definitely respects what Yoda possesses. And in Palpatine's mind, Yoda is the ultimate enemy and he is the equal but, or near equal, I should say, I shouldn't say equal. He is the counter, but Mace Windu isn't looked at with that respect at all from Palpatine. He is looked at as a fool who <laughs> wields a power that he does not deserve. And Ooh, the yeah. second that Palpatine is able to shatter the illusion of superiority, he wants to, and that is his motivation. I really feel like that. When it comes to the Saber, I would be willing to concede that they would stalemate and maybe, yeah, it's true that Windu probably used Anakin's fear to tip the scales just enough to disarm Palpatine. But in any other realm, especially the Force, Palpatine just mops Windu. Like, I feel like if the fight had gone on legitimately, I think it would have taken a turn much similar to how it did with Yoda where he would have either put away his lightsaber or allowed himself to be disarmed so that he could fall back on his force power and just, you know, ragdoll Windu or, you know, do some sort of Sith spell or use his force lightning to, uh, to dismantle him. It is important to note, though, that Vapad, although it is a lightsaber form, it does have that same ability in the force as well, and that mm -hmm. is why 
Windu is able to channel the dark side through his lightsaber again in the form of force lightning and attack him. So we don't really know what it would look like if Palpatine solely fell back on force abilities, if Windu would be able to, you know, continue to use Vapad. But I, I absolutely get what you're alluding to and what you're getting at. Um, there's no debate that Palpatine in the lore is more powerful than Windu. But we absolutely. just don't know the, the intricacies of Vapad and it doesn't seem like anytime soon we're going to either because yeah, it's just noted not. slightly that Luke may have known the ability, <laughs> but it's never explicitly ever written anywhere. So I nice really think, sort of it. Yeah, it, I really think that um, Vapad is a very powerful lightsaber form and it and like you accurately pointed out, it transcends beyond just two combatants meeting uh, in a duel and does transcend into the realm of the force. We saw Windu repel and reflect Palpatine's lightning back at him. I mean, that's not um, normal. And so I don't know exactly how far Vapad would carry one if it did fall back into literally force versus lightsaber. Um, I don't anticipate that Windu would last very long. I think that he would last a lot longer than the normal Jedi, but there would come a point where uh, Palpatine would just overwhelm him with his force power. Yeah, you're probably right. So, I want to sort of break it down in our closing. Yeah. A few different ways you guys can choose to look at this duel. We can look at it from the perspective of Lucas said that Palpatine lost to Mace Windu and that it's legitimate. That That is a legitimate argument yourself. You can fall to the fact of the novelization is very vague. We don't get any insight into Palpatine's thoughts. We don't get any insight into whether he throws the duel intentionally or not. Uh, it is up in the air and it is undecided. You can take the novel. You can say that Mace Windu took Anakin's fear and defeated Palpatine using that legitimately and that they were stalemated and equals up until that point. Mm -hmm. Or you can take the stance of you can look at the lore, you can see how powerful Palpatine is, you can take into account that everything is planned and that he threw the duel intentionally to get Anakin on his side. Something that I like to think about with the lore is, and I don't want to discredit the power of Windu or the effectiveness sure. of the pad, is that Palpatine does make a mistake in the duel, and that is letting the duel progress for too long. You get the intention in the film that Palpatine has opportunities to strike down Windu if he's quick enough. There's a moment in the duel where he pulls his lightsaber directly at the chest of Windu and Windu's lightsaber is to the side. Mm -hmm. uh, his guard has been dropped and you get the impression that if he drives through as hard as he can, that he can catch Windu there. But what I like to think happened is that Palpatine allowed it to go on for too long that allowed Mace Windu to fall into the pad, to abandon the code of the Jedi, to abandon the restraints of the Jedi and completely embrace his power and that Palpatine has a moment in the duel where he realizes that that may have been a mistake, but that he also chooses to throw it to Anakin in the end when he senses him and use this as a yeah. golden opportunity. That is my interpretation. Maybe this is just coming from me because I'm a huge Sidious fanboy, but I'm I'm not going to say that... Pal of course, Palpatine's not infallible. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to have a few oversights, as you pointed out. Um, but man, this is a guy who doesn't just think a few steps ahead of everybody else. He's He thinks 10 years before everybody else. I mean, this is a guy who made sure that his plans were meticulously laid out not just for the clone wars not just even for the fall of the jedi but for the rise of the empire and his plans for what the empire would be and do i i just i can't um you know with what i know about palpatine as a character i don't think there's any part of me that could accept that he wouldn't plan out to lose perfectly at the moment of Anakin's entry in order to tip him over the edge so that he could make him Darth Vader. Right. 
the, this argument is a superconductive loop of energy. There is no. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. There is no right or wrong interpretation. It is just an endless argument that we will be having forever. Unfortunately. And or fortunately. <laughs> That's actually honestly pretty rare in Star Wars. Because um, a lot of times with the lore, depending on how you structure your argument, there can and usually is a definitive answer for most debates. But this is one of those that just honestly just doesn't have an answer. It truthfully does not have a definitive answer. And we can choose as fans to let that make us angry and to weaponize it, or we can just sort of listen, absorb others' interpretations, absorb others' points, and have a good time with it, which is what I like to do. Because, you know, we have different interpretations of the duel. That's fine. That's great. It, it opens avenues for discussions like this one that make it interesting. So that's all I have to say, man. I, I think we both said how we felt. We laid out the arguments for all sides and our answer is inconclusive definitively why is insight master very wise <laughs> thank you thank you so much guys if you have uh, stayed this long we really appreciate you and we'll continue to make more discussions and thank you again to the archivist you guys have really been showing him a lot of love in the comments and he's doing a great thank job you so too. much so so we do read them and we do appreciate it. And if you guys want other discussion topics, please request them. This was a request from an acolyte, you know, in the comments. They wanted to see this. So let us know and we'll, you know, we'll play around with it and maybe make a discussion about it. But as always, my friends and fellow acolytes of the Force, thank you for joining us today in our discussion. And may the Force be with you always. May the Force be with you. See you next time. <laughs>